I hate to break the fishing news up, Graham Chuck, but I'd like to speak about the ice hockey. Congratulations. You're one of the 13 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. We just traded a migraine in for, like, an orgasm. Might want to mark that down. Yep. (laughs) All of my projects are on schedule until they're not. A member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. About as funny as we're going to get today. Balls in your court. If you heard every third word of that conversation while the intro was playing, uh... You haven't figured out how to mute us for the intro? I don't have the board. I am in control of the board. Why don't you just lay a different intro over the old intro and bleep us out Take with the new intro? all intros, layer them over each other. Yeah. Yeah. In a symphony of intros. Play all just nation Just hit all the intros. buttons at once. Yeah. Like, Take every podcast we've ever done, overlay them on top of each yeah, other, and yeah. you can listen to all 600 episodes in one hour. Like Beatles. Yeah, here we go. Mega intro. You're listening to I hate to break radio. the fishing news up, Graham Jack, but I'd like to speak about this. You're listening to DJ's Nation Radio. You're one of the third team that's hired from the real life. A member of the... You're listening... That was actually kind of funny. That there you go. Didn't Could you imagine small, if they're like meshed I, together and had a, made a perfect song or something? Like that'd be so <laughs> sick. We're like, oh my god, we're Charlie Puth. Uh, we're so good. Right now. We can make Charlie so much music. Have you ever seen his, switch. his Instagram videos are so hot right now? He just can make songs just yeah, without even trying. TikTok. He's got perfect pitch. I, I was yeah. gonna say though, I love that Christopher Chalmers is an Instagram Reels guy because those Charlie Puth videos were big on TikTok like nine months ago. Yeah, it does. Here, here we go. It does oh, take a minute oh, to go from TikTok to Reels. Yeah. Uh, just if you could picture him with his handkerchief and his monocle going, oh my God, <laughs> Chummers. That was so TikTok so nine months ago. I, I saw issue. it nine months ago, but it just got triggered in my memory. <laughs> the Instagram reels for Oilers Nation are just us right now. I mean, like, fuck, this 16 game heater might never end. We're cooking. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Yeah. So during the intro, I asked actually, JR. No, Instagram reels are so sophisticated. It's actually real time. I'm waving right now live on reels. <laughs> mm. I looked at JR and I said, hey, I called you last night. And he gave me shit for calling him so late, 930. That's when I, night owls like me, that's when we do our best work. That's when we send the most text. Send me an email. So he said, well, I forgot that you called until right this moment. And you know what that gives me? The upper hand. Incorrect. Nope. I'm the man in power right now. I reached out to you. You haven't reached back. And so I'm, you should be, you should should start with, I'm, I'm sorry. That would be a good start. Who answers their phone? In Everybody. Well, people who are up and doing I stuff. Always, I'm Do you always, talk on your phone a lot? Yeah, because I'm, I'm always thinking maybe I want a contest. <laughs> and that's how they'll contact that's you That's when they phone. call you? So you answer every she always had Power 92 you? plays it is about music. Now show me my money. Uh, oh, you still remember that? Of course. Can, can't you? My sister used to do, she used to call from work. She used to sit there and just call, call, call. Power 92. If you answered the phone, that was the one where if you answered the phone yeah. that way, right? Yep. And you said that. And you had to put on your voice recording or your voicemail. Yeah. Do you know so, which one she did? And she got through like a bunch of times is they would play like a one second clip one day and somebody would try to guess the song on the bear. And then the next day they it would be a two second play. click. Do they still do that? Yeah, they do on play. And then it would get up to like a 10 second clip, but every day the money would go down, but the time would get higher. She used to call for that all the time. <laughs> That's funny. I've won a bunch of giveaways at liquor stores. If I go into a liquor store, I'm entering the giveaways and I've won so much shit over the years. So you never know. Do I just ask for free stuff. And do they phone stores. you when you win? Yeah, they call. I know you guys are in an office building here and you guys have like an office setting, but you have a TV and you have other things. But remember when you used to walk into like any office, a dentist, they'd always have like a radio playing on a, on a, yes. like a boom box, right? Yeah. They still do that? They should. Or is it now like. It's called satellite radio. Yeah. Or, or the receptionist Spotify. just has AirPods in. Yeah. How can a receptionist do her job with earpods in though? Listen oh. to music. Yeah. Not answering the phone. <laughs> I was going to say, not like a great a receptionist. We language. saw Facebook glasses for the first time. You ever heard of these With the Ray-Ban? These Ray-Ban yeah. deals? Yeah. Jeez Louise, man. It's the future. Are they like... I, we, need, I, we need to play I need to play with them a little more. I would love to play with them. The fact that you can listen and no one else can hear it. So you put them yeah, on. You wow. can play a... Who is able to hear it but you. Because it like vibrates off your bone or something. However, Zuckerberg's doing it is beyond our powers. Because it's the same way the uh, underwater headphones work. Oh, God damn you're it. like, hey, Meta, take a photo. Oh, well, what God Are we recording? All right. What, does this mean the computers? What? what do you mean you don't answer your phone? Of course, when I'm working. But even still, it's Because if you ask me what my job is today, I would be like being on the phone. Yeah, yeah. you calling people. Yeah. During about work stuff, so they have to answer. Yeah, you got to answer a lot of calls in the evening. It's a risky bit of business not answering your phone because if you're sitting in your truck or your car and somebody calls you, 
and you're like, oh, I don't really feel like it. I don't, isn't the first thing that goes through your mind. Do you think they just saw me? And that's why they're calling me. We've like, done this just, on the pod. Before. We have done this. Yeah. Okay. You got to answer your phone. That's, Man, you can't live life in paranoia, bro. I like calling people or getting calls because it makes my drive home go fast. Me too. Well, that's, yeah, I'll call people. Like, that's when I think most of calling people is when I'm driving. But yeah. if you're always on the phone, the likelihood you're going to have a second phone call is zero. I feel like in 2024, you don't go like, oh, let me go. The person I'm talking to, or the other person. Have you guys noticed this new thing with uh, your iPhones where. Hold on now. Something is fucked up. Put your hand in the air and break your wrist. <laughs> Tyler's having t- Tyler says he well, isn't working. We are the board, having some serious well, no. work at the board and having audio issues. Well, so issues. the thing is, like I do, I always have a backup recording going and the backup recording has never stopped. The main recording keeps stopping. Yeah, so the- all these stops and starts of us going, oh, shit, they're going to hear it all. Yeah, I think so. Because I think I'll probably just use the backup recording today. That's cool. Um, have you guys life. noticed with your phone when somebody calls and then it goes to voicemail, you can still answer it during the voicemail message? Yeah, that's as a, they're hearing it. Yeah, is that a new thing? Yeah, and, dude. And, and I, now, like, I can. And, and now you can I, play it right from. Well, I'll, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get it scribed to me while it's being recorded. Yes. but then it doesn't. Yes, then you have to actually go in though to delete it. So even if you read the text and you're like, okay, that's who that's from, it doesn't like go away. You still have the one or the two. It. You got to still deal with it. It really yeah. is wild that people are putting their time and effort into voicemail. Okay, 2024, so. who leaves a voicemail? That's Jared, what I mean. Sales guy, Jared. Oh, sales guy, Jared. I've been in the Old car soul. with him when he's left voicemails and I, it makes me mad. I'm just like, Jared, just text him. Like, sales guy, Jared always leaves voicemails. And he does it like, hey, Jared here. And it's like, yeah, they're going to see you called. It's like he calls always like, Jared. calls you and it's like, yeah, man, BM will know it's you by your voice. You don't have to say, hey, it's Jared. So he it's never a, leaves voicemails with me. I think I've set boundaries. It's a nation thing I was talking, I was calling you about last night, 930 oh, last okay. night. Yeah. Nation watch party on Saturday yeah. at Greta Yeah, for the Logan Hunter Memorial. Beautiful. Foundation. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good game. Are you trying to sell me on the event? No. Are you coming? Oh, uh, that's part one. Yeah, I'm I'm coming. I don't know if I'll be there for the start though. That's fine. It's Mike Fugelberg's birthday on Sunday. Yes, the seventh. So I have talked them all into coming. Oh, nice. To okay, more reason than so I that's, gotta be there. That's what I then that's why I was calling. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, so I you would, can I ease would, your mind now. It wasn't I that very, important, but very rarely miss an event. Chalmers is saying he doesn't know how to buy tickets. I'm telling you, the listener, <laughs> it's as easy as going to nationgear.ca and <laughs> clicking the events tab. Yeah, Chalmers is gonna drop. 60, 80 bucks of cash on the table. Oh, and, just, and just say somebody else yeah, do so it. So I'm going to go to the event. How do I buy tickets? Like, oh my gosh. No, you guys, what the you know what? <laughs> Life's, life was a lot easier back then when I could just put 80 bucks on the table and just hope that it finds its way to where it needs to be and that I can just walk in the door without a hassle. Buddy, your computer or your phone remembers your credit card information. Mm-hmm. You literally go to the site, click, click, everything gets populated, click, buy. You're, then you get an email saying, here are your tickets. Yeah. So just like everything else. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The professional event. Amazing. <laughs> How's your guys trip to Moose Jaw? What the hell's going on? It's nice to see you. Uh, the nice. Moose Jaw Warriors are going on. Yeah, they're going on a heater. They're 3 and 0 yeah. now after a domination in Brandon last Welcome night. Welcome to the Furcus Circus. We are, oh, fuck, I'm going to wear this shirt today. Damn it. You have a Furcus Circus shirt? Yeah. Juan well, bought us the best. That's sick. Moose Jaw Warriors are top of the pops. Yeah. The no. greatest, potentially the greatest warrior of the modern age is playing right now. Yeah. You can make a strong case. And he, geez, he does not look like a hockey player, but no, he is a hockey player. Which one of one. the three are you talking about? Fergus. Oh, you are Fergus? Yeah. yeah. He's shattering records. He's, yeah. Savoy looked good. Yeah. Savoy looked good. Then to my Tadechuk, he's legit. What was the barn like? What was the atmosphere like? You know what? Popping. Pretty good. It was popping. It was good. People had, they got their towels. Yep. What's capacity? Uh, five. 5,000. So uh, close-ish. Yeah. 38. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. solid. Yeah. Four. Didn't win the 50-50 though. No. I, I had high hopes. Hungry, hungry hippos at intermission. Very well played. Oh, no, actually, that, that was, that's a fun thing. Right? How do you do that? So like, you know, you like roll under a car on one of those yep. things. So they brought out four of those with laundry baskets <laughs> and put a bunch of balls in the yeah. middle and then they were hippos and they had <laughs> and to they drag, drag them back. Over. Yeah. That's good, wholesome fun. That, <laughs> that is, is good. Prime, that is prime, prime, very fun. fun. Chuck a puck or no chuck a puck? No chuck a puck. Didn't chuck a puck. No. Mm. no Hungry entered, hippos. Entered a draw to win a sign. Didn't get that. Damn it. What sign? It was a wood carved Moose Jaw Warriors 40th anniversary sign. Yeah. Ooh. It was cool. Went to the casino. How'd that go? 
poorly. Oh, but what? I always feel like if you go to somewhere like Moose Jaw and you lose your money, the money goes directly into the community. Like yes. they just take the money out of the casino. Oh, so that like, makes you feel better to the children's hospital and with like yeah. $80 you're and they're waving the cause. It. Yeah. So I'm always like, well, I lost, but I'm supporting the cause. I robbed the cause for $35. Oh, you finished up 35 bucks for like two hours of blackjack. <laughs> we what? had a guy come you play. You cash that out. You didn't just like throw it down on one hand That's and just no, wait till you it, lose. It was, I just, I, cause it was getting, I don't know. All of a sudden, our table got ransacked by like a bunch of nineteen-year-olds. We went started that, interrupting. I'm like, we oh went stone cold. Let me just interject. Like they're gonna here. not know to play here. I'm out. We were winning. Yes. And then they showed and up. And then Menudo showed oh, up. Oh, the coolers. And they were like, "Here's the deal: hitting on twenty is fun." And all the friends were like, "Yeah." And I'm yeah, like, "There's this some is weird, weird anchor calls." Super old guy <laughs> so- on the anchor who's. Suspicious yeah. of everyone. That's who you want to be your anchor. He was great. You want the last line of defense he would fall to be on the that sword guy. Yes. The table. God, I have loved the playing. Kids, fall over. kids come, hey, sits on the other side of him. Yes. So this guy's anchor. There's an empty seat. Goes around and declares himself new anchor. What on earth? Yeah. So. See, that's when you need the old vet that's going to just teach these kids a lesson. That was the yeah. anchor. But why didn't he do anything about it? Because he looked around and yeah, left. And then no. he left. And then he I have been down. Then he came back. And I think we started winning again. He was very calm. I've presence. been witness to very many old anchors vet who just like will not hold bite their tongue when they see something going wrong. Yeah. And I appreciate the shit out of it because I like to consider myself to be somebody who's going to play by the rules. I push them a little bit. I will hit on a 17. I will. You'll hit on a 17. I will. It like depends. a hard or a soft it, it 17? What the fuck? Oh, definitely. Oh, soft always. Well, that, but that's fine. hard. No, but hard. Up, it depends. It oh. depends. Oh, no. So you're an idiot. Yeah, no, if, they, <laughs> if, they're <laughs> showing, you if they're showing a 10, I will sometimes hit on a 17 and uh, a 7 because Chalmers, I got the knowledge up here. Not top tap your own Chalmers, ass. <laughs> all you need is a low high and you're good. Right. But I'll, I like to play. I like to double down. I like to play a little risky. I didn't double down get, on what? Listen to no, this. Three shoes. I didn't get a single double down hand. No. No blackjacks, no double down hand. Three full shoes. You never see that. You shit. split aces? Yeah. Oof. Depends a, against what you're looking if it's, at. Depends if it's, on if feeling. If you it's split not twos? against a 10. Um, I, I usually don't split twos. You, you know, uh, I was going to say you never split a winning hand, but I think if you have twos, you're not winning. Yeah, I just I always like to live with the assumption the next card comes a ten. So like splitting twos, it's like, what am I gonna give myself two twelves eventually? That sucks. It's worse. Fifty percent, fifty fifty. Do you hit on sixteen? Depends what the dealer has. Yeah, what depends. right? So if the dealer has like a seven, yes, hit. Yeah. Any if the dealer has a bus card, you wait. It all depends on how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling like very cautious. Now, how mad do you get the other people at the table and they fuck up? That's the real no, question. See, that's not it. It's You've not get mad. Can't, he can't get mad. No, it's he's not. A, he's but it's not about, upper. but it's not about fucking up. It's about staying consistent. If you do it once, don't just change your mind every single time. Yes. Stay consistent. We've talked about I, this thing. I had a moment. I haven't been in a casino in a while, but the last time I was there, there was someone who came and sat at this table and it was just me and another guy. We didn't know each other, but it was going pretty well. This guy came and sat down and he played, you know, three, four hands playing table minimum, which is cool. You can do that. And then you just, you just can't be an idiot. And he would sit there. And if he lost a hand, the next thing he'd go, I'm going to sit this one out. Oh, and he wouldn't oh, play it. And it was like, dude, no, no, uh, man. Bad you're form. either in or yeah. you're out. Bad, bad form. Bad form. Yeah. What a goof. Yeah, that's bad. And you and the do guy, not replace the anchor unless you're like the inventor of blackjack. Yeah, Who and do you, you think can't you are? be an anchor if you're going to play like. A moron. Minimums or even like 10. If it's a $10 hand and you're playing 10 at most 20, you can't be the anchor because uh, you can be if you play smart. If, if you're you willing do, to take the but, bullets. Okay. So you've got number somebody in the set in the two seat. Yeah. And they've got a 50 to hundred dollar bet. Let's say. Yeah. And they are in a position right now where they are looking good. Yeah. And you have a $10 bet down. You have to. You have to be smart yeah. about that. But like that's you, why I love. But if you're the anchor, you have to follow the anchor yeah. code. And that's why I I love being the anchor because if I'm playing like 20, 25 bucks and there's people at the table playing like 100, 150, if you're a good anchor and you help them out, you're usually drinking for for free that night. They're usually keeping you pretty stocked up and it's good vibes at the table because this guy's winning a shitload of money. There's nothing better than an anchor taking one right in the nuts of the team and everyone wins. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, Yeah. And like, like, hey, if I'm sacrificing my, you know, $15, $20 hand. Yeah, but the worst is when you take that card. And you bust and everybody else. Like, well, but, thank you. And then it still comes up and you're like, taking the card because you should. Yeah, no, you should. He's not, he's not, he's not hitting on. You're not actually sacrificing table. anything. You're just playing the you're odds just, properly. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. It's all a feel game. It's a gut game. So anyways, I didn't lose it all, but I kept $40. And that was my trick at the casino, Chalmers, is you leave with money. And then you're like, how did you do last night? And you're like, well, I didn't do terrible. I still have $40. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you brought. I can't. It's impossible. If I if I go in there with like 200 budget and I spend it and I have 40 walking out of the casino, I'm throwing that thing right on red. No way. I'd rather walk out with zero. Yeah, me too. Or try to get it to 80 and then... Get another drink because daddy's going back to the table. Then you go to guac. <laughs> if I spend 200 bucks or something, I'm either walking out with a thousand or zero. I don't like walking out with just like 50 bucks. Uh, any, if I can double my money and especially if I double it fast enough, I like getting the hell out of there going to get mm. a beer. Just a quick double up. And quick just, double up. And then done for the night. And then done for the night. Oh, I like discipline. Next morning, go for brunch. I didn't get it all casino. And then you can just pretend like, again, if you went in with 200, walked out with just kept 40. You can just be like, ah, it was, it was a $200 brunch. You can justify it. Do you want to go to, we should go to the casino right now. It's pretty fun. What's the closest one? Please don't Playoff, tell me. Uh, playoffs. Post playoff. Games. One in the arena. Speaking That's of, open? Speaking That's of open playoffs. Three hours a day only on game days. Is that what it is? No, but it's ridiculous. I think. Speaking Maybe. of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. What about it? Are we scared of Dallas all of a sudden? Well, I mean, I was, should, but like, my God, Dallas. last night we ran into a hot tendy. Yep. Babe, you know what? You know, our hockey talk is brought to you by our friends over at Bet99. Bet99, the number one online gaming experience in Canada, according to Ledger, built by Canadians for Canadians. Elevate your experience at Bet99 with, or with Bet, at Bet99 with things like same game parlays, player props, and flash bet markets. 19 plus, play responsibly, not available to persons in Ontario. If you had Oilers money line yesterday, didn't go great for you, but Dallas, yes, Chalmers, they're good. It happened quick. The game was tight. Under six minutes. Four it was, the bang, shots bang, were 24 bang, bang. to 12 at but one was, point. But it was weird. We were out shooting them, but it felt like they were out shooting us. There was a lot of one and dones. Yeah. There was no, well, they didn't play with any. Like Dallas was all high danger and you just, Calvin Pickard was trying his ass off. Oh, yeah. But the minute the levees broke, it was over. The Oilers had a lot of perimeter shots. No one going to the net, cash in the garbage. It was just a lot of. That end of the second. See, I'm not going to get too overreactive about this game because you're allowed to have a down game every so often. Yeah. yeah. Uh, But this was a, this was a measuring game. I know. But the one thing I did want to see is like that last five minutes, last seven minutes of the second period was atrocious. Like it was just not fun at all. Yep. You go into the room and you think this is a potential playoff matchup that we have. Okay. And we could find ourselves in this position. So, the chances of us winning this game right now, not really high, but at least let's figure out what we can do mentally to go back out there. Let's win the period. And try and change, like get out of this funk because that can happen in a playoff game. If you find yourself with with the, kind of the vibes not going right, the, the, the game script's not happening and you're, you're, you're finished the second period and you're down three, nothing, let's say. Not five, let's just say it's two or three. You have to be able to fight out of that. And that was an opportunity to go into that room and regain that fight, like really figure it out. When they came out in the third, did they come out much stronger? Little bit. Well, but Ottinger, he just demoralized him kind of at every turn. A lot of posts, a lot of good saves. We couldn't get the puck out of our own zone at times. No, no, we love giving it back. Their forecheck was absolutely killing us. Well, and the others were too cute by half, right? Like they were trying to make cross ice passes when a simple outlet would have been sufficient. Like, so there's a learning yeah, lesson yeah. against some other teams. We can be cute. We, you know, yeah. Leon can sauce a backhand from one end of the ice to the other, mm-hmm. but against teams like that, that are going to be gritty, super good. And, in, and especially when the intensity ramps up in the playoffs, we got to find a different way. Like you have to be able to adapt in that moment. Yep. I don't know that we saw that. I hope they learned those lessons. I mean, whatever. This is a long, this is a long week. Still got two more games. It was a late start. I accidentally locked eyes with Tyler there and I saw a deep abyss. I saw that too. I saw deep. his reaction to it. Your, and I couldn't see your face. I was like, is he hopeless? What's the face he's making? No, I'm not hopeless. Murderous rage. Oh, that's good. You thought about I just it. really don't think they're as good as Dallas. And that's kind of oh, concerning. Oh, no, it's super concerning. Like ugh, Dallas, they got deep. a better goalie. They got a better blue line and they have four lines that'll just hammer you like they're That's fast why, and they're why, physical why didn't we go all okay but, the, the, but the other thing that pisses me off is like when you look at the oilers in the bottom six it's like evander kane can be that guy ryan mcleod can skate warren fogel can skate i on thought the, they played well on the fourth line like connor brown can skate matthias yanmark can skate 
and yet they just play soft. Yeah. And Evander Kane, sometimes it comes and goes. Fogel, it comes and goes. I mean, Ryan McLeod, whatever, that's where I'm hopeless is him ever having What's a our, physical shift in his life. But. Well, no, he's not physical. What's our season? Do we play four times or three times? Three times. And they're two and one. Yes, we beat him in OT. Yanmar played golf with Tony Romo. I saw yeah. that. Yep. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. Ugh. You think about that? But the Romo. I and did. Romo wasn't yeah. built in a day. Gene, that was Gene. awful. That was, a bad one. That Gene. was Gene. awful. Rare it's on a goddamn it was Gene. awful. He goes, well, he, you know, he said he played golf with him, but he didn't play Gene that good that go day. But don't worry. Something. Romo. When he gets a night off like no. that and get one on a tee, like Gene, you take good it for you, man. Yeah, Knowing what I know about it. the media, Gene pays for all those props himself. Every episode. You think those outfits are free? What was with that dude pushing them too? Won't well, push Gene. Yeah, yeah. Be oh, part of the bit. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know it's part of the bit. I think he's starting to get a budget now. Maybe hey? uh, five grand for bringing in day. bringing in friends. I didn't turn it on until right at puck drop because I was watching the Blue Jays, so I missed Gene. The, ta- the start time yesterday was so arbitrary. Again, it's just a horrendous, horrendous thing to ask. Just say people. it's an eight o'clock start. Just be consistent. That's fine. Or just do what Major League Baseball does. Like again, there's a script that the in arena like operations has that says like. Anthems, players, blah, blah, blah. puck drop, 737, or last night, puck drop, 752, because all the Oilers games that have been 752 or 652 or whatever time zone you're in, it's the Wednesday national broadcast. They're always at 52. So why don't just put on the schedule that it starts? Because then there's all these, it's like every game now is something. It's harmonica awareness night or some bullshit. (laughs) And then they're like, everybody sit here and listen for 20 minutes as the history of the harmonica is read to us by a World War I veteran who's 117 with advanced dementia. 18 people come out for puck drop. (laughs) Yeah. You're like, oh, great. (laughs) You're like, there's a little known tribe. I feel like when you look at how many events there are before games now, is there just every single game there's going to be something going forward? Like the intermissions are so sad now on Oilers games. Yeah, I don't love. I mean, I get that it's like the community foundation or whatever, but every intermission, you're right. There's like a seven it's minute so like sad man. These dogs are dying, and it's yeah, like, oh. and it's like, don't you understand what <laughs> happened to the flowers or whatever the crisis is? And like, I get what they're doing. I understand that it motivates the generous spirit of Oilers fans to buy more fifty fifty. But it's such a downer every game, man. Man, oh man. They've killed the 50 50 for me. They Why? It, they, they, they've, I don't know. I don't Taking like Taking it out of the arena? I think, yeah. they should, I think they should run two separate 50 50s. Global 50 50. Someone newer 50 yeah. 50. And like, have it so. And I don't like how they extend it over multiple days. Like, it should be the winner should be announced that day. It's, it kind of, it's kind of it's kind of the, like, the it, it loses the luster. Even when they were down like, you don't in the game need... and they would announce the 50-50 and you see everybody check their tickets and then, and then one guy up and pretend go, yeah. that yeah. shit got us through the decade but of like, darkness. But like that should be an in-game experience and there also should be a viewer like keep like in, as inclusive as possible but like you should have a winner that day. Like I remember I went to go buy one and the guys like, "Oh yeah, and, and the the two early draws are already done." I'm like, "What?" So mm-hmm. what am I buying? How much was the 50-50 in Moostra? Uh, the way that well, the, you could buy fifty dollar uh, up to like it was fifty tickets, fifty bucks. 50, yeah, fifty for fifty. Let me get sheet like total Santa's was list. fifteen grand. That's fucking electric. Uh, yeah. uh, were they? I think they were in the twenties. Oh yeah, twenty twenty one. Very yeah. nice. Yeah, Moose Jaws Mini Edmonton man. These are our people. Was, we love them. It was them. a decent chunk of change given it was only five thousand people. So I just the they, 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 take it. I don't like what they've done. No, with I agree. I bought like, some at the Buffalo Sabres game, and they were like, eh, "Just make sure you keep your tickets for the draw yeah, in four days." I'm yeah, like, in four days, I'm like, oh what? my god, who's got like who? No, how am I going to remember to do that? that? You've killed the spirit of the fifty. <laughs> then they bring in all the winners, what? and they handle oh, like eighty three million in chess. Yeah. Like do so. Wait, do a the, 50, 50 for like, you know, this isn't going to happen in the middle of the third again, and we're not all going to go look at them. No, because you're going to lose your ticket and forget to look in the draw four days from now. Yeah, go online and look get to see if your name was announced. Like, what? My dad used to buy 50-50 every Oilers game I went to as a kid. You know, I just buy them. Since Rogers, he's never bought. See, I want security to walk me out. Yes. I want to see, the, I want to see yes. the basement of Rogers. Hand-pay. I want two Hand-pay. sacks of money that yep. are like cartoon With the dollars. They should, have yeah. Yeah. They should still offer that in-game. Mm-hmm. And then have a TV <laughs> one. And you can have the option to join the like live TV one. But now still, I'm thinking about... 
the winner should be announced that night at Rexall place when you would have somebody who would win the 50 50 and you see them sprinting because oh, they had to oh get my. to the other side of the arena Life within 15 right minutes there, or that person you I'm, have six minutes and four seconds to get to like, section oh 10. i used to think about that when i was a little kid i was like boy what if you don't get there like sorry i loved it when people would pretend to win and then everyone oh, around yeah. them would be like ah ha ha there's no way tony won or whatever <laughs> I had a buddy do that at Big Valley one time in the middle of a big crowd that they won the 50-50 and then he was doing the thing and everyone's like, yay! And he goes, I'm lying. I'm lying. And then everyone booed him. <laughs> Great. <laughs> You're on That's their shoulders. Standard. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I, I don't buy 50-50s anymore. I bet it did a moose truck so I knew it was going to get announced that game. You're going to have that moment. That moment of Well, suspense. the chance of that moment. Somebody yeah. got the moment. Well, like, I mean the moment of the anticipation of like, oh, yes. come on. And then you have a C number and the announcer goes B and you're like, ah! Hey, remember they used to play the announce if the others are having a shitty game, they delay the announcement so you stay in your seat. Yeah, man. Like that's that's, that's what the 50 You stay about. till you knew if you won 50-50, yep, then exactly. you left. Because if you left, you couldn't win. That's right. And now there's no reason to stay at games. I leave with 18 minutes left in the third if I want to. What? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't do that. Okay, good. I got the 50-50 to crew game. It was like 585 bucks. I was like, see, this is reasonable. This is, I mean, you win, you're happy, but you don't break even on the night. What would you do if you won like the 200? Like, let's say what, what's a nor, what's an average 50, 50 these days, like a million, long, like a million man. bucks, 2 million bucks. If you want, would you immediately hop on a jet that night with your friends oh, for no. straight to Mexico for seven days? That's what we've always said we would do. Jet to I, Mexico? No, we were just like all inclusive. <laughs> you'd pick five of your buddies and you'd be like, okay, five of us. We're no, going. It's always been like a jet to Vegas. Well, Vegas, Mexico. I just picked the place. What's wrong with you? So dismissive. What I wonder what, what is the first thing I'd do? Wake up in the morning, call hmm. whoever you need to call, tell them a, don't expect to see me for seven straight days. Yeah. I wouldn't say a word. You wouldn't? No. But it's like that meme. But there'd oh, be good signs. luck. There'd be signs. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. All of a sudden old Bagmo's got a nice pair of kicks on. They're fresh. My teeth would look like sandpaper. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Chalmers would have veneers. <laughs> yeah. I'm never brushing again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I'd swear to God, man. I'd be like, I'd take half of it and I'd immediately call a banker and I'd say, do something with this. Smart. And then I'd take like. You got to blow some. Five percent of it. And I would be like, we are having a week. I'm spending and if it turns this by into next two Monday, weeks. Yeah. That is just what we're going to do. Yeah. What's five percent of a million? Fifty thousand. Fifty grand. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Grand scheme of things, that's nothing. And it's tax free money. So it's like you won two, right? That's what we always say. Mm. Right? We well, say that? Yep. Who's we? The royal. The royal, we? yeah. The collective we. Yeah. Okay. Fair. It'd be great to just throw out like a free red herrings if you won. Like you and your elderly wife go to collect. You're like, what are you going to do with your money? Like, I'm getting surgery to look like her. She's getting surgery to look like me. And then that's your scam. <laughs> Cost us 800 grand. That's what I, <laughs> that is the thing with like people I, that win the lottery. It's like I some people are great. Some people are like, come here. I bought a fridge. I still see that like Instagram post though, every probably. so often where the guy who he won like a million and a half dollars on a scratch and win ticket. And so he, it's a new story in this like little small town. And they're like, for the story, they want to go to the same gas station and recreate it. And he wins like another $500,000 yeah, 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 yeah. like yeah. right there. Yeah. That I'm is the most incredible. I won again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, you're not gonna believe it. <laughs> it was like three hundred grand or yeah. something no. the second time. How do they say no again? No, no. What's up, Dukes? Yeah, that was that's an incredible video. That's gonna be your immediate play if you win, though. Is you have to immediately reinvest it in whatever it was that you won your money. So if you win a million six in the fifty fifty, you go to the next game. And you're like, hello, my friends. I'd like one point six million dollars, <laughs> and then suddenly it's double like two million. You double your money. 50 50 chance though. 50 50 chance of doubling your money. That sounds like an awful idea. Or they're writing one. six business days for the Oilers to announce <laughs> the winner. Poor lady's just like, I gotta go get more printer paper multiple times. The most demoralizing part of winning that money would be you're holding your two million dollars over your head, and like Cody CC walks by and goes, yeah, It's not bad. <laughs> you son life, of a bitch. life changing money. Yeah, it's like yeah. one eighth of Jack Campbell's buyout this it summer. Every like, oh. Six weeks. He's like, Yeah, it's nice to have. Yeah, good, good for you. A little throw around cash. Good on you. Yeah. Do you think they still pick up their checks every two weeks? I think the NHL's direct deposit. Nice. One time I saw Boris, but Mano's. it was checks for a long time. It was checks I saw for a Boris long Mano's time. I saw Boris Mano's paycheck chalmers at the Palace Casino. 
What? Yeah, we were playing blackjack, and he like we were, I was like nineteen, so I was playing dollars or whatever, and he lost all his money, and then he was barely in the bag, and just pulled his check out and slapped it on the table, called the pit boss over, and said, "Can you cash this?" Oh my and god! They were like, "No, sir, we can't." And I remember I can't three hundred grand Canadian or something. It was wild. He was making like a lot of money. And he's like, ah, and he just stormed off. <laughs> like, a tough break. No, I wonder how, why, why he didn't work out. He was making like 2 million bucks a year. You missed the plane. But it was hand, like it was hand signed. It was like. Someone had to sit there every two weeks and write the checks. You ever heard that story about Kirby Puckett? See, you might impressed I know this. Yeah. Some guy was telling a story about getting his first big league paycheck and he was looking at it in his locker and smiling and Kirby Puckett walked by and goes, oh, that's cool. First check. Yeah. Want me to cash it for you and pulled out like a wad of hundreds like that thick. <laughs> The guy was like, Ugh. Do you know the Ricky Henderson story? No. Nope. He signed a $1 million signing bonus. His very first contract ever. And like a year later, the manager for the team came by and was like, Ricky, man, why haven't you like cashed that check yet? And Ricky's like, well, I framed it. It's in my house. It's in my office. I framed my first check. And the manager goes, Ricky, you take a photocopy of it and then you cash it and you hang the photocopy. You don't actually hang the actual check. So he never, ever cashed his $1 million signing bonus, which was like it? the biggest. No, no, not at the time. It was but like, did he do it after he was told? Oh yeah. Well, so he they made him. That's a million dollar piece of art. That's what he thought. That's a, he just hung it. And that was back when like million dollar signing bonuses were huge, yeah. like huge, huge money. And the A's were just like, why is this money not coming out? Like Ricky, what are you doing? Yeah. He just straight up framed it and put it on the wall. Didn't realize you should take a photocopy of it. Maybe my the favorite Sacramento A's. Yeah, the Sacramento. Well, I'll talk about that in a second. My favorite old school baseball story is back in the seventies, the Pittsburgh pirates. They figured out they're like, Holy shit. We have a terrible cocaine problem on our team. Like the players are like nice. doing it in the lot. Like what is going on here? They eventually figured out the guy they hired to be the mascot was selling cocaine <laughs> to the players. <laughs> no. He's, the richest, about it. He's the richest guy on the team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, fuck, we got to get to the bottom of this. And it's like, oh. God damn it. The bird, the bird selling. The, <laughs> the bird is the word. <laughs> the bird selling him coke in the room. Um, yeah. The Sacramento A's who are moving from Oakland to Sacramento. And are they actually? Yeah. Yeah. For three to four, anywhere from three to five years while they wait for the stadium in Vegas to get built. But this is an F you to the fans. Like oh the yeah. So, they're doing the reverse, like Edmonton Football Club, Washington Football Team. They're moving to Sacramento, and they will have no city identifier. They will like just each. Be the A's? They're just the A's. What a mess! <laughs> and their social media allows no comments. They turn off the comments on everything they Every post, post everywhere. Where does like Vegas doesn't even want them? No, nope. Vegas doesn't want a baseball team. Not really. They don't want not like, a piece of shit one from like a bad owner. I yeah, that I don't, I don't want the Tropic Canopy be knocked down. It's a beautiful place. I mean, the, that's not Trop. Trop's in Tampa. Coliseum. Come on, Jay. Tyler, you couldn't be more wrong, bro. The Tropicana in Vegas. The is Tropicana real. Hotel. Oh, I thought you were talking the about the baseball field, the Tropicana. Yeah. Fight him, Jay. Fight him. Yeah, that's this on guy. me. This that's guy. on me. Try I had to, to jump in. That's what I thought he meant too. The Tampa Bay Rays field is called Tropicana the, Park. So they're gonna knock down Vegas is gonna <laughs> knock <laughs> down a building. This is why they're doing Tampa. it wrong. They're doing it all wrong. <laughs> to then build the Vegas A's. This stadium. team plan doesn't work for <laughs> shit. Why <laughs> would you be just a lesson to the rest of you? <laughs> hey, we committed. We committed. <laughs> you could be fucking next. <laughs> What the A's are just the A stands for assassins. We're gonna assassinate <laughs> yeah. your building for ours. They're yep. just starting to really break the rules. I was like, okay, so you're just gonna move to an entirely new city, yes, with no team moniker, correct? And to a tiny little building, yes, for a finite amount of time. Is this the time. Mullet Arena? Yeah, how do they sell this to Sacramento 10, people? Like, do you oh, want to get man. it's so tough to get to, but that'd be cool for like a Jay's Nation trip. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, is like it kind of works in Phoenix because like, yeah, people will go. Who the fuck's going to be like, well, summer trip to Sacramento to watch the Tigers. To go to Sacramento. Kings games weren't enough. It's the capital of the I state. was just going to say that. Light the beam. Uh, is there anybody that's been more screwed than Oakland for sports teams? Like, no. holy fuck. Doesn't seem like it. I think it's but going they, great. I, I, I Baltimore. Know, Baltimore's Oakland, been a little bit. I don't know if Oakland as well, have but. nice things. They are. <laughs> what is wrong with Oakland? Outside of the stadium. Root like like uh, protesting against the team than in the stadium. I went to a game in Oakland in 2017. So this is before everything. And at like the fifth inning, they're like, just a reminder, the last barge will be in 45 minutes. And you're like, the BART doesn't run after the game. They can't guarantee the safety of the patrons. Did you Yikes. see what Oakland did? So there's this thing called the last dive bar or something like that. 
And they make like merch and stuff about the Oakland A's. It's like a fan run kind of thing. What a and, weird idea, AJ. And they, I told, yeah, I told one, I was like, it's like the old, it's like Oilers Nation. Like, uh, I'm immediately on their side. Continue. So they made bracelets saying last dive bar. So people could like show their support. And it's like a fuck you to ownership. That's what a lot of their merch is. Yeah. So a handful of Oakland A's players wore them, including Yusturi Ruiz, who led the majors in stolen bases last year. He was like one of Oakland's best players. Young, up and coming guy. They sent him to AAA. Wow. But not even Cut that. Throat. They also, they were the ones that designed a lot of the merchandise that Oakland would have. That would be like the cool secondary market stuff. Right? Like cool the Oakland idea. A's came to the dive bar and was like, you guys make really cool shit. We sell it out of your place. Design some stuff, make it. And they didn't, Oakland didn't pay them for it. Like really? Didn't reimburse them. Nothing. To the fan site. To this bar, to this bar that oh. had, and then the people that worked on this merchandise. So it's on, a real fucking would, mess. Hold on. They went to a bar and said, we like your shit, make more of it and we'll sell it. Then didn't pay them for what No, they, they said, make a stuff, like make a stuff for us, design it. You guys have cool designers, design it for us. We'll sell it. You sell it. And then didn't reimburse them for any of the work that they did. And then they got like a letter from Major League Baseball being like, you have to stop using our likeness. Yeah. <laughs> so what? what? When you go to games in Oakland and you come off the subway, you like walk this gauntlet of like this overhead concrete overpass, sorry. No. And there's so Chicken many, wire. yeah, so many bootleg merch guys. I'd never seen it before. And they're selling their own t-shirts and their own hats and all sorts of shit. Damn. Then is that not going well in Oakland? It's kind of a thing. So when do they move effective immediately next year i think and their owner came out and was so like they're gonna see this year through after they made that announcement yeah jeez how do well, you sell it to people in sacramento though like do you want to get invested for four good years do you want to see the lowest know, payroll baseball. in the majors maybe, by like, 80 million dollars maybe it becomes like a river hawks type of atmosphere where it's just like you know it's the cool thing to do like yeah. go play in a small like watch a major league city or sorry, a major league team play in a small barn. Like that's for a couple of years. That's yeah. okay. But three years, that's going to lose his luster after like one and a half. Um, but their owner came out and did his little like press conference day in Sacramento. He's like, this is such a unique thing. It's an intimate environment for baseball fans to come watch some of the best players in the world. You can come here and watch Aaron judge hit a home run like from close up. And everyone's like, dude, you own the A's. Why are you talking about like the A's no. losing and giving up home runs to Aaron Judge is like your main selling feature. Like, you <laughs> When couldn't... you flip and try to market yourself to the fans, the opposition. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Come here and like, watch us get hey. our hair blown out. <laughs> Planet Trip Sacramento. Think about You'll all the us. cool players you can see from the other teams that come and play us. Do you want to watch your home team at home where you're only 50-50 or do you want to come to Sacramento and get absolutely shelled? Yeah. No difference than when we went to Mullet Arena. I was 65% of Oilers fans in there. Yeah. Oh, that is fair. But yes. All right. Uh, Oh, we do need to quickly step aside for a break. Real Life Podcast delivered by DoorDash. 25% off zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. All you need to do is download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. When you go to the app store, download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code nation 25. Oh, happy birthday. Belated birthday, BM. Thank you. I had oh, to... happy birthday yesterday. Yes. I saw that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well done. I had nothing to do with it. What'd you get? A five, a five, nothing loss. That and also a kick to the pills in the old bankroll. Oh, you know, you had heavy you on that game last night. No, Oh. oh, no, I didn't go heavy at all. But like, you know, a Connor anytime goal would have been nice. But none goals oh. is not nice. It's boring. I, I don't want to talk about that. What'd you get for your birthday? Uh, I got some clothes, uh, a I, lot of candy, a lot of candy. Nice. I've got candy reserves at my house for of at the, least of a the, weekend. Of the weed kind. No, Gummies. sour dinosaurs, like legit candy. Ooh. Oh, yeah. They're the best. Okay. What is the greatest birthday you can recall? McDonald's orange pop in the thing four hours in the play place. Is this that is nice. But like now, why do McDonald's all look like prisons now? <laughs> Great point, dude. They're disgusting. I, I don't even know why the hell I was in the McDonald's the other day. It was like a week and a half For ago. McDonald's? No, I wasn't getting McDonald's. I had to wash my hands and I was like in call. No, like Wait I had, <laughs> there was something wrong with the truck. I needed a bath. I need to go to the washroom. <laughs> So I went to the washroom to in the McDonald's meth. in Collingwood. I, was, I wasn't getting the food, but I had to go wash my hands. I had shit all over my hands from my truck. It had like, doesn't matter. 
Clip that. These kids playing in the play place were walking into the bathroom with like just their socks on. Yeah. And like, I went and looked at the play place and it was a fucking prison. It was disgusting. Yeah. Is not the way I remember it. So you, I find it hard to just walk into McDonald's and not get anything. I do too. Like, not even a coffee or anything. Some pump. No, I didn't. I also get guilt if I'm going to an establishment and using their bathroom. I feel like I got to pay my. I do one filet of fish sauce, please. I had a filet of fish. On 70, again. 75 17 cents. cents. There you are. Now I've used the toilet. No, do you know, you can buy socks at McDonald's. You could buy a pair of socks. Socks. Yeah. For the play place. You can get ice really? bags of ice too. Hey, is that yeah. true? Yeah. One yeah. time bags of ice. What? One, you one get bags of ice for a buck 50, like 15 pairs of socks. At two if in the you morning. drive up to a McDonald's drive through and you say, I'd like two bags of ice. They will give you full Bags of ice from their ice machine for a buck fifty a bag. This I went to. I went to an. Hundred percent amazing. Life you can resell that at a higher price. Damn totally. near. Start up your own ice store. Well, I went to an Arby's once and bucks. did that. What? I was going through an Arby's drive thru I was on my way to Slow Pitch. I was just getting dinner. Me and boys roll up, and they had signs like little signs thing being like, "Get your ice here." You get to the front, we go to pay, and the, I was like, "You guys actually sell ice?" And she was like, "Yeah, you want some?" I was like, "Yeah, sure." I was saying it was like two twenty five for like a yeah, big ass, super cheap. And we and pulled up to slow bag pitch. Too. I got to test this. Right. Yeah, with no, ice. It. You just fall out of the truck in a bed of ice. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I just spent six bucks. That Arby's has no more ice. I bought it <laughs> dead up. I bought my ice. Yeah, for the next hour. So, did you book any tea times that golf course we were talking about the other day? No, I went on. It was like the tea times are opening up at this moment on this day. And I went on there and they were already all gone. Can we have some context, please? So the other day we were sitting here doing the podcast on Monday. You guys weren't here. It was just the three of us. Yeah. Surprised you showed up. We talked about the Blue Jays and their starter who was going to be the first pitcher. Or he was, it was his very first start. And we were happy about it. And he got no hit to a 10 nothing game. So that yeah. was not great. Yeah, no, not great. But in that conversation, while we were talking about it, Tyler was looking at tea times. Oh, weird. He's doing something while he's on the show or something else. <laughs> and yeah. he said, look, can you guys believe that this place said it was tea time? But it was also April Fool's Day. So we had to do some reconnaissance. We had to you do some. Fooled? We did not. It was real, real yeah, deal. Holy field. Deal. No, they were just going to start. They were going to start taking tea times. They were going to open up. When are they opening? Sunday. But Sunday, they're sold out Sunday, of tea times Sunday. until I want to golf. Wednesday. You know what the new move is for April Fools? I'm thinking about this. The reverse. So you pull a reverse on them. You tell you somebody say, the truth that you didn't want to tell them. Say some grandiose that you want everyone to think. All these stupid brands that are like, wouldn't it be so funny if Volvos came with a lemon or some bullshit? Actually do it. And then people be like, oh, I thought it was an April Day Fool's Day joke. You're like, no, we did it. Like we gave away whatever the fuck or oodle noodle actually blah 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 or others nation do well, the I stupid see what you're thing saying. rather than being like ha oh, isn't that funny like actually see it through and then be like, buy one hot tub get two get a hot tub free exactly we did bogo <laughs> two people took <laughs> us up like, on it uh, the guy walks in he's like i thought it was an april fool's day joke they actually gave me a free hot because like let's be honest at a hot tub store how many hot tubs do you think they sell a day they're mostly friends for organized probably crime. What? <laughs> like a mattress store. How, how many mattresses really? So you're telling me that spot. Okay, it makes sense now. They're like, is, oh, we sold an extra one. Well, Wink. I don't know, man. There's that manufacturing company just outside in Thorsby. And every day they are making lots of hot tubs. But then the fake sold. hot tub worldwide sales reported are like 10x the real units. Hmm. It's just like. That is a good point. I would like to know how many hot tubs they sell a day. I need to know. But also, like one store. What's the markup? Huge, right? So, like, like what ten? Like ten? If you move one a week, are you good? No. Let's just put it this they way. Sell, I bet you. I bet you the markups to is a hundred percent. Global so hot tub market as of 2022 <laughs> Go on. is estimated to be $298 million USD. That seems what? low. That seems low. Worldwide? If you run a hot you tell tub me business. Backyardcanada.ca is not the place to find this information. Who wrote is this? Is that hot tub Canada haters? Or is that what I could mean? Canada. I'll bet you it caught. I, I think that it's more than 100% because I think that like, what does an average hot tub cost? $12,000? $10,000? Around there, yeah. Okay. If you ever open up the skirting, are they really twelve thousand dollars? They're fucking so expensive, yeah, dude. They're plumbing pipes. They're two jets. They're two like um, uh, pumps. Bunch of jets. Just a hollow plastic layer that costs a lot of money to make. And then the facade, and then a bunch of spray foam inside. 
I'm thinking that's like twenty five to three thousand dollars max. If you run a hot tub business in Edmonton, send us some details anonymously. Yes. And if you're willing to sell me a hot tub at cost, I will give you personal advertising on my social media for the rest of my life. I'll enter in a lifetime contract with you. Do you want to lifetime. know about my hot tub, your M check? The Oilers Nation hot tub? Sure. That gladly. came from our dear good friends in the hot tub industry. My family wants a hot tub. And you know what? There's just certain luxuries and things that I look at that I'm like, if you want to have a hot bath, go upstairs into the bathtub that I installed. With beautiful I like tile the social it. element of it. So do I, but I don't actually, it's like, if, if you invite your neighbor tub, to have a personally, bath, personally, I don't like, <laughs> you know, this Tyler, anytime we check into a hotel, I always ask if the boys can fit in the tub together. Yeah. And I also like, there's something again, not a lot of seasons in Edmonton where it's particularly enjoyable to be outside, but those windows where it's like every the, season, the even perfect, in the winter, a hot tub. Yeah, you're right. But like perfect hot tub in temp being outside Chalmers. Yes. Oh, all right. Keeping it 100. I found new oh, numbers. Hey, the global hot tub market, according to MordorIntelligence.com. Oh, sounds legit. So smart. <laughs> $5.66 billion this in 2024. 2029, they estimate that it will rise to $6.68 billion. Largest market for hot tub sales, North America. Fastest growing market, Asia Pacific. So I would also add. Means, like average human spends 70, 80 cents on a hot tub. Go fund that. What? <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with that. Okay. Population of the world. Yeah, no, I'm not going to listen. If we're talking about they markups. Average, on average, they spend so according to your market hour. research, everyone in the world gets a 78 cent hot tub. That's how the industry works. Yes. <laughs> so it takes. So how many 78 senses tub? does it take to get one hot tub? That's how many people don't have a hot tub to the one person that it does. Would probably be about 12,000 people. Well, it's more because. It's not a dollar. They discontinued the R8. Did you know this? I am not good at math. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. listen. I, I was going to 10,000. I'm going to keep it legit 100 here, and that is I don't really enjoy hot tubs. There's the best hot tubs. Let's go Let's go top five hot You're tubs. You're telling me when we were at the JPL in January, we wrapped up our games on the ice, and we grabbed a pop and went into the tub. You weren't having a good time? I liked it for about 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay. The initial sitting down... Looking around, socializing for 10 minutes is good. Then my body gets too hot. Okay. Then now I've got a decision up. to make. Yeah. Well, here we go, Jay. Got a decision to make. <laughs> I get like you. Don't worry. Yep. I, I, get I suffer from what we like to call Dunlap disease, where my belly Dunlap over my belt. And so I don't really like to sit outside of said hot tub very Dunlap. much. So people can just sit there and stare at my body. Okay. So now I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, listen, if I stay down in the hot tub, I'm just going to burn up or I get up. And I feel uncomfortable and I sit there. Now, upper half freezing, lower half boiling. Doesn't make any fucking sense. Oh, then you do the reverse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do a headstand. It doesn't lap over your chin. <laughs> <laughs> you do a headstand so, with your bathing suit out in the air and yeah. your legs just like this for three minutes yeah. and do a handstand in the tub. <laughs> then flip it. So... It is hot tubs for me are it, every minute is the <laughs> law of diminishing returns. So I get in first five minutes. Amazing. The rest of the time after skiing, I love a good hot tub, oh, but after about it. five to 10 minutes, I start to feel the energy vacuum. That is the hot tub sucking oh, the out energy it. out of mm-hmm. me. Right. And I, oh, and I, and you start to get so relaxed that you're, you know, you're nodding off and I just can't afford that type of thing. Then, you know then I mean? when you get out, that's when the crow attacks. When Fresh I'm nodding off. Here. Yeah. So. You just got up from a nap. The other night. I haven't been knocked up in a you long time. You should do this. Get, and then you should jump in the cold and do the. Oh, you, we're, we're, who is this a cold? So the other night, <laughs> I'm over at a friend's house. It's a Friday night. We're talking about stuff to do in his house and like just a bunch of different stuff. And we start having a couple of beers and he goes, hey, let's get in the hot tub. It's an impromptu tub. One of my favorite tubs. Love it. But after five minutes, I was like, I now we're just sitting here, like having a beer, looking at each other and being like, okay, so we're in a tub and we're just sitting here. What? So you made more money, more problems. Hey, I mean, it killed the vibe. Cut, well, <laughs> everybody got tired. It tires you out. I love a tub. So I'm just not a fan. So I can't imagine spending all that money to put one in my backyard when we have a perfectly good bathtub upstairs with perfectly good hot water tank in the basement that can perfectly good heat up that water, put it into the tub and have a soak. If you invite your neighbors over for a hot tub, you're a hero. If you invite them over to join you in the bath, 
you're going to jail. <laughs> That's the difference in a hot tub. Why you come have a shower with me? Yeah. Hey, neighbor's <laughs> wife, why don't you just come upstairs and watch me? I can hang out with my, my neighbors and my friends at my house without a tub. We can play crib. We can play cornhole. How about this, Chalmers? I just Googled average cost of tubs in Canada. What I've got is anywhere from ten to 15000 for That's the cost of the tub. Expensive. And then the average cost to run a tub, 500 to 1000 annually is the estimate for Canada. That is super low. 500 to to $1,000 annually. Yeah, always be keeping that water at a rumbling per boil. Per year? That's not, that's low. That can't make any I sense. I was going to say, I think a big part of the way these places stay in business, you know, you always got to add like those cleaning salts and shit like that to them. I would imagine the markup on those is just bananas. Does anybody add in the permit cost? You need to have a hot tub permit in the city. Did you know that? What are you, a communist? I'm just saying. What are you, a cop? What are I'm you, a not permit a cop. cop? I just am somebody who deals with the permit situation a lot. Like a lot, a lot. And so like you have to have a permit for a hot tub. And the electrical is not cheap to run. A couple of years ago when I was moving and looking at houses, a few of the older homes in St. Albert, hot tubs in the basement. That seems fucked up. Indoors? Yeah. That's a little okay, so, old. Yeah, so yeah. my buddy just got a hot tub. And he splurged on it. So like 12,000, we're talking like maybe double. He is on vacation. He calls me and he's like, dude, I need you to go to my house because my hot tub is like, I'm getting alerts on my phone that it's not reaching temperature. And I'm like, I don't know what you two are laughing at right now. What are you laughing at? I'm trying to whistle the price of the hot tub. It's expensive. It's not my hot tub. I didn't pay for it. He's like knocked back by it. So... He's like, it must be leaking. It's been nine days. Some there's there's a leak somewhere, but the water's evaporating because it's sunny out. Anyways, I turn on the jets. I do a bunch of stuff. it's leaking from the union that goes into the pump. So I tighten it, hand tighten it, fill it up. I go, okay, I think we saved your hot tub. It's about to freeze. Like it's gonna freeze. We saved the hot tub. Like four weeks later, finally gets a service person out there. They tighten it. Okay. Uh Dude then goes away another three weeks later. And this is just like a week ago. He's away for a week. He calls me again. He's like, there is something wrong with my hot tub again. Could you please go check it? I check it. Same union, still leaking. How can you ever trust this shit? Like, how can you ever trust a hot tub? If that kind of stuff keeps happening. In that particular instance. (laughs) How many people need to tighten this fucking thing? Maybe there's a, yeah, maybe. So thank God for Wi-Fi on a hot tub though. So if you're going to spend it, spend it, get the Wi-Fi. Cause he almost spent, he almost legit wrote it off, wrote it off. Cause he didn't have, he has the Wi-Fi going to us just like your house. If your furnace stops working, you get a little alert. You do. I do. I do. If you have Nest or an Ecobee or something like that, you have a smart thermostat on you. Not me. Oh, I have one of those. Well, your house is going to freeze up one day. Probably you got me freaked out enough about my damn filter and my damn outside hose and my damn. Been. Is everybody going through the spring maintenance at your house? I got, some, give us, give I've got a sump. I've got some I don't know what to I've do. I've got a sump pump in my backyard in the far corner because God knows there's a lot of people's stuff that goes all their water goes right into this one corner. Before we get to Chalmers' spring home advice, we should tell you it's presented by Snow Valley Aerial Park and the Rainbow Valley Campground. Aerial Park opens up on May 31st. Rainbow Valley Campground. Opens up on May 15th. Online bookings, rainbow-valley.com. Family fun all summer long. Did you say for personal matters? Great venue for personal matters. It's actually, now that we've seen a few, it's probably top of the list. Hashtag sponsor wedding 2025. Oh my God. Could go anywhere. This guy's unbelievable. How many in your party, sir? For what? For the wedding? For the personal matter. How many people are we inviting? Projected. Like 175. I got a, I got a, clip this from BLTN for you. There are people leaving me voicemails guessing who from the office is going to get invited and who is not. Oh, and they're outstanding. That is great. Because they work through the logic <laughs> of why they think you will invite people and yeah. why you th- they think you will not. And it's so funny. Hmm. That will be funny. I'd like, to put, <laughs> I'd like to put a calendar next to all the rest of the calendars out there. And all it says is mentions of the wedding and it'll be Monday, Thursday. And I'd like to see if we can go up until the day you get married on a Monday or Wednesday without talking about or mentioning your wedding. Hashtag sponsor wedding. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Don't like the player, Chalmers. 
Oh, I don't. I think it's great. The vows will be sponsored by Star Mechanical. Oh, I know. Would you get married great. at the pork rendering plant? Dude, your jacket, your your suit jacket should look like a NASCAR outfit. Yeah. That I should be sick. <laughs> Did you see these guys? Okay, fucking idiots. They had like a golf theme wedding. Can't yeah. imagine the wife was oh, too on board with like this. The- they like, yeah, just chips at the ring. Yeah. yeah the yeah. one dude like puts takes like five hours to do it. Fuck. It's like time for the ring bearer. And instead of just getting somebody to like walk the ring up, guy number one puts it to guy number two who puts it on a piece of grass and then chips it to like the groom. And you're just like, good Lord. Yeah, that's us. See, I like the ones where I see where instead of like a, a kid throwing out flowers or whatever, they've got a guy walking with beers and hands them out as they walk down. Oh, Ooh, that's yeah. Nice I've seen touch. that guy. Yeah, it's good. That. That's good add into it. I wedding. found, I saw a TikTok the other day that is a app that allows people coming to your wedding to sign up on there, make a deposit and bet. You can set, so like I would for my bet wedding. Bet on the divorce? I would, no, I'd set lines of things or like things that are going to or could happen at the wedding and then the app pays everybody Ceremony out. under 30 minutes max. Yeah, and you're the house. So if like the house wins, it goes to the- If I like could give you fund. one word of advice, mm-hmm. when you go Don't and register that. for your gifts. No. Say just cash. Register for don't don't look at that thousand dollar lawnmower and think ah, nobody's going to buy me that. I'm not going to register for that. Do it because three or four people may go in on it, it or you might get that real rich uncle who just goes, fuck it. It's a kid's wedding. I'm going to get him that thousand dollar lawnmower. This only happens like two or three times. We, <laughs> we had a family member give uh, only thousand dollar <laughs> gifts uh, on your. Register. Yeah, that's what you say. Yeah. <laughs> Because then I think that increases the likelihood you get cash. Yes. Amber and I have lived together for like almost five years now. Like we have it. We don't need. Uh, do you have a do bread have, maker? Don't you want to just, Kate, JR? A thousand dollar bread maker? It's got three <laughs> speeds. JR, let's get weird here. Don't you just want to get married just to get that money? To Chalmers? No, not to me. To your lady. Dude, I mean, if for any a thing else, like just that get, that get that money, bread. dude. And now there we're is, older, so that the the cash size. You're oh, dude, you're like yeah. Uh, back in the day, oh, back in the day, oh. I would have given you fifty. Today, <laughs> I'd probably give you like two fifty. Like oh. I'm telling, you, dude, Wait, that Sunday, that's no that no Sunday, <laughs> Chalmers good for two fifty. Oh, I don't think you're the uh, level of friendship that I have with Jr. You're you're around Gosh. a seventy five dollar guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be a lucrative. Chalmers okay, could be off. A lucrative list. List. No, but just Chalmers listen. That Sunday when you're hung and you just had the best weekend of your life and you're yo know, you're you're hung, uh, but you're hung over too and you're just opening up envelopes of kish. It is one of the, and people are just like making you breakfast and it's still your weekend. You got to spend like $40,000 on the wedding. You do? You? You? I think you're going to come up 40 grand and then get all your gifts. Who else is going to pay for this? Your parents? You're figuring it out. Your Amber's dad? Her parents? Tell them to fucking get together and talk it out. Old Say this is... Say the this is a you. Husband, this kind of life do you think I live? This is a you guys problem. I'm not like from the royal family. I have to pay for this wedding. Parents, you are gonna find as a, a parent, bar, you're gonna find a way not to pay for it. Well, that's if my parents were paying for the wedding, or if her parents were paying for the wedding, I, I wouldn't be doing hashtag sponsor wedding 2020. I think it's time that you have a real honest conversation with the parents and you say, hey, look at listen, when I'm you had re- kids, there's two things you knew you were gonna have to pay for. <laughs> Okay. Races? Two things that you knew were going to be expensive. I know you paid for hockey. I know you paid. It was school and a wedding. So where's that? Let's go. Let's or go. I or Sign I say, listen, I'm a real catch, and if I don't get thirty grand, I'm fucking out of here. It's called a dowry. Mm. Yeah, also, your wedding should not shit. cost thirty grand. If your wedding costs thirty grand, you're a fucking insane person. I think you're incredibly. Out to lunch on how much I don't remember cost. how much I ours cost. I can't even remember, dude. You have to buy food for people. Yeah, that's a good point. Like the at like the cheaper maybe end. maybe maybe disrupt the model. Mm. Byo food. <laughs> yeah, All right, everyone, you can bring up your sandwiches now. Yeah, maybe Wedding have a menu line. with prices associated so, with it. Again, 175 people potentially. If I have to pay 70 bucks a plate for these people to eat at a thing, that's 12 grand on food chalmers. Yep, totally. What are you and serving? Then, and then booze. So Down do a yard. toonie bar. Nobody gets mad at a toonie bar. Nobody gets mad. Open nope. bar, everybody loves. Full price bar, everybody hates. Okay. Toonie bar. So at all these venues I'm looking at. They want to supply the alcohol? Fuck them. No, you can bring your own alcohol, but then they charge <laughs> per head a corkage. And it's anywhere for most of these places from. You don't have a venue hookup? Yeah, and all the years you've been alive and you've been doing these things, you don't have like a place that you, the that, somebody will, that somebody will. You want to do it at my house? The Reman Center is They're empty. charging 20 bucks a head for that's every in, adult. That's insane. 
plus a tip on top of that. Nope. But do I you want to start coming even, to these but, things but with not me? Even, not even, but not every Aldo adult drinks. You can have it in the old they Aldo Edmonton Center. <laughs> Here's the you thing: you probably still what? come out ahead, though. <laughs> I think what they but then you have to tune in. But then you have to buy your booze. So uh, if you run a liquor store or a booze company, hit me up. Hashtag sponsor wedding 2025. Um, (laughs) And I'd love to get a hook up there, maybe. Or just a large room. Or if you're the venue who's sponsoring this particular segment right now. Do you have a tent that Tyler can get married in? You know, like Canada Long Weekend, how like Liquor Depot will have all their stuff on sale. Just go stock up, buy a box here, a box there. That's straight up what my sister and my now brother-in-law did for their wedding. It'd be like this liquor store is having a case lot sale. And they would just like, or sometimes I'd go hop into them because like it'd be limit two per person and just roll in there. Nobody cares what kind of wine is on the table either. So don't... I yeah, do. Know. It'll be garbage. It'll be pissing about your check. If you're copper, copper moon it up and just take take the label off. Here you do what you do. You take the label off, <laughs> soak them, and then put Tyler Amber labels on them. Fuck and yeah. now it's just like, well, doesn't matter. It's wine. Right, wine is wine. Is. And you know what wine is for on the tables? It's for that fucking terrible period of the speeches where you can't get up and go get a drink, <laughs> and you need one. Yeah. You drink the wine. That's that. 42 minutes is Chalmers hell. Yeah, it's the worst. So make the speeches tight. That dude. reminds Tighten me of R. I. P. Funny as fuck. RIP Chris, the intern's wedding where we had that. They announced that there was going to be the bar closing for a little while while they did the speeches. So the nation table went out and basically cleared them out and they brought the photographer over and he just went, I'm not taking a picture of this table. No. <laughs> it was just beers everywhere. Yeah, it was great. If you're willing to roll your ankle while walking down the aisle, you'll Ooh. get a really good discount. Yeah, Diamond and Diamond will be there for you. you just, Amber just needs to be willing to break her own ankle on her wedding day. Or Nancy a- Kerrigan you. 20% off. Tear my ACL walking down. Yeah. Like- Diamond and Diamond will be there for you. Jim Tan Lawyer. Yeah, the the venue is a big one. I think it's because, like, obviously there's no shortage of weddings. It's not yeah. like they have, there's a huge market for this thing, so they know that they can charge. Four times. But man, back in the day, you used to go get off. 50% off. But nobody wants to do it at a hall. I mean, that's lame. We're debating right? it, though, just because. Water like, park? No, I know, but see, a hall's, like, I've had a good hall party. It's fucking killer. Yeah. You know what you should do? Santa Maria at the mall. You know these places like Climont? It's very awkward. Like Climont or yeah. like the Blueberry, like awesome. there's, there's like these places like the awkward. Blueberry Hall, which yeah. are like out on like Graminia Road out by Devon, okay, where you he, can put campers and people can stay overnight. But people don't want to do that. Oh, I do. And you have, you have a baseball field there. So you, you straight up about nine, eight, seven o'clock, jackpot? you get out of your, you go play some Home softball. Have a <laughs> Home run derby. <laughs> <laughs> play a little jackpot mid-wedding? Come on. Yeah. I, I don't want to do that because like I know my friends and family aren't campers. Yeah, I'm okay. not. And if you do it there, the people who don't camp, it's like, oh, someone has to stay sober because you can't get an Uber 45 minutes out of Edmonton. That's a good point. Yep. Get married you to an island in the middle of the river. Yeah. That'd be hand beach. over hand rope all your guests one by one in a robot. Just- well, I know that his decision making for who's going to be invited from this office is going to get a whole lot funner, more fun. If you're already trying to figure out how to cut costs and you haven't even you haven't even seen the total bill yet, it's gonna be great. Oh, I can't wait until this thing goes from two twenty to one seventy so fast, and you're having to make some real tough decisions. Oh, the list from here is super tight, though. What's the total people so far from this office? No, from in total, we were at one ninety, and it's down now to one seventy five already. <laughs> oh, she'll be one. She'll be one fifty in no time. No. Easy. Oh yeah. Why and I have the because I get calls. So being why like, do they even? Why do they even make the original one ninety? It was so easy to cut. It's a long story, but okay. I get calls from Amber being like, "This person doesn't have to come," and I have the biggest grin on my face. Oh. I'm like, "Fuck yeah, <laughs> drama!" I want it. I want that smoke. <laughs> the nation office, dude. I'm going to tell you one thing. Another piece of advice. That fucking day is going to go by so fast. Enjoy this part. Right every now, planning with us. every every single thing you this do with podcast? Her, when you're sitting there and you're fighting with her over you're the a one couple, tells me to shut the fuck up about it. No, like no, no, dude, else. I don't. That's a it's a stick. I know. I love talking about it. I loved. I remember looking at Aaron when we were fighting over it and just being like, "I fucking love this. This is the best." Remember that shit. It's the best. This is the best part. And like when it all when they go pick flowers and they're so happy about it, you're like, "Come." Oh. I'm good for about a week. She's going to be so happy. She told me it's her birthday today. I was like, do I have to get you anything? Or is the ring good? She's like, ring's good. I was like, hell yeah. You are on easy street Dude. for about a year. Hey, hey, hey. You oh, still relax. go by. You, you, I did. No, I you did. don't. Okay, you I, can't I put that on her. That's a weird question. You put her though. in that position. 
Of course she's going to. Oh, Tyler. I say for nation staff going, we have some kind of draft event where you have to stand at a a podium of some kind (laughs) and draft. Uh, Screwing each other over on bills might be how they mate. This might be Uh, foreplay. I don't know. So I was like, I want to get you in there. She's like, no. And she's like, can we still go out for dinner for my birthday? I was like, oh, no, I have a beer league playoff game at 630 tonight. I was like, we can't go out for dinner. She's locked in. What's she going to do? Leave? Yeah, exactly. She's still pulling. And this is when it starts, Amber. So you actually have a playoff game? Yeah. No, I actually do. All right. Well, I can't miss it. We're facing elimination. Hashtag wedding 2025. So are you, homeboy. Guys, should we take Amber out for dinner? May as well. Let's no, take she's her a out. season ticket hey. holder. She doesn't want to miss the game. Oh, my God. We need to get a better hashtag. That could be anybody's wedding. No, it'd be only Tyler's wedding. Sponsor okay. wedding 2025? Tambor. Tamber. Hashtag Tambor wedding 2025. Tambor. Tambor. That's what I'm going to call you too. From now on, Tambor. Ambler. 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 No, it's Tambor. Yeah. I mean, but you're only taking, you're using her whole name and just one letter from him. Uh, yeah, hey, you know fun. what? Fuck Tyler. Tambor it is. Amber M. Chuck? Timber then? Amber I mean, yeah, Timber. Amber M. Chuck? Amber Chuck. Yeah. You taking her last name? Fully hyphenated. Jay Z did. The longest last name ever, if yeah. that's hyphenated. What's, What's her, her last name? name? Jinx. I don't want to share it. Oh my God. Is it new I, I only know it as her Instagram handle, which is a play on her last name. Yeah, and then it's add four more. It's a lot of sure. Chuck. Uh, so it's longer than your M. Chuck. She's saving a letter. I'd like the hyphenated, I think. Is that how you pitched marriage? You'll uh, save a letter. Think like, about think it. Elbow to elbow on the jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Over the course of your Just lifetime, not having an extra letter in your last name, you'll save minutes signing she, your name. Yeah, she's like, I'm in. That sounds like a good investment play. Think of all the time. All right. Well, I think she started we'll, practicing her new signature yet. No, she hasn't. She's mm-hmm. excited to change. I really language. like handwriting. I used to love your M. Chuck's a nice one to handwrite. I used to love doing J's. So Y's are pretty close to that. I don't know why I used to love handwriting J's. Was this when you were on oh, death row? Do you still write years? cursive? Uh, yes, I do. Actually, I have terrible handwriting. I, ha- I, I have, have a weird mix. Writing. Sometimes Today, I write in all caps. Oh, that's terrible. All caps because it's like quick and that's what my hand knows. But when I'm really in a rush. Yeah, I, I write in cursive. It's weird. My printing turns into my kids cursive? can't read it. Yes, it's, it all connects. Yeah. Terrible handwriter, though. Wonderful penmanship. I will say for myself, my printing is excellent. When I first saw your handwriting, I didn't think it was yours. Yeah, I get that a lot. I was like. Who is this? Yeah. It looks right. like uh that was like a long a, one. I yeah. gotta get going. Yeah, it's almost an I hour. Got a meeting. Hour 10. Shit. All right. Good episode, guys. Shout out to DoorDash, Snow Valley Aerial Park, Rainbow Valley Campground, and our friends at Bet99. We'll be back on Monday.